B-Vectoring is an ag tech company that develops and markets naturally derived biologics and systems for crop protection and crop yield management in the $240 billion global crop protection and fertilizer market. B-Vectoring just announced that it, can, it is conducting paid demonstration trials with a major multinational grower based out of Mexico. And CEO Ashish Malik is here to break it down for us. It's Wednesday, January the 31st. I'm Martin Gagel with Market Radius Research. Please remember, this is neither a recommendation nor investment advice. We're here to learn about the company. Ashish, thanks a lot for joining us today. You've had a string of solid news out already this year. Can you please give us a rundown on what it means for B-Vectoring? Yeah, good morning, Martin. Very good to be with you again. And Happy New Year to the folks that are seeing uh, at least my face for the first time this year. Uh, yeah, so BBT, we, we, we're continuing on the strategy, which we've already communicated uh, to the market, to our shareholders, to our followers, that what we're trying to do is take BBT from where we've proven ourselves in the U.S. We've got good, repeated, growing revenue in the U.S., and really now increase and uh, uh, increase addressable market for the, the 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 areas that we can play in. So increase the size of the sandbox, if you will. And consistent with that strategy are two stories that we've put out this uh, this year already. One that we that we talked about about two weeks ago was about some partnerships and work that our partner in South Africa is doing in that great country. But what I want to talk about mostly is what we're putting out today, which is uh, the paid demo trials in Mexico, much closer to the North American markets, of course. And we're very excited about this because not only does it show that, and, and, and just want to remind people that we've already started the regulatory approval process in Mexico. That's a process that started about a year and a half ago. But now we're also engaging with growers to create market demand so that once the product is registered, we can actually be in revenue very quickly. So it's very exciting about not only opening up a new market, but also supporting the strategy around increasing the addressable market for BVT. And so you're able to run these trials while it's concurrently going through the approval process. Yes, you are. In fact, in Mexico, what they allow you to do is import a certain amount of product for trials and demos and things like that. So, so that's what we were able to do. We brought product into Mexico last year in 23. These trials started in 23. They'll continue into the early part of 2024. So we're using that import permit process that we already have obtained. And just to be clear, you're getting paid to do the trials. You're not paying someone else to do the trials, right? Correct. The grower is paying us. Now, yeah. this is not, you know, this is not to, we're not capturing the full value of our, of our system. Yeah. This is more to offset our costs because we do have people helping set the trials up, you know, collecting, help collect the data and providing support. So it's mostly to offset uh, our, uh, our costs that have gone into setting these trials up. Uh, but it's very exciting because it shows, and I always like having a grower pay for a trial as opposed yeah. to doing it for free because they feel they have more skin in the game that way. And so yeah. they actually do a better job of, of, of conducting the trial. So you talked about your bigger strategy. So you're operating, you're selling product in the U.S. You're registered there. Yep. You're in Mexico. You're you're doing work in South Africa. What is this? Your overall strategy is to become a global provider of your, your B-vectoring uh, technologies. Yeah. It's what other markets are in there? And can you just sort of flush out your strategy and how you're, what you're doing to sort of get your global dominance? Sure. Uh, so we started in the United States. We got the EPA approval just before COVID. 2020 was our launch year. So we're going into our fourth season now uh, with the 2024 season. Um, in addition to the US where we've had the license to operate for a few years, We've also submitted for regular approval in Mexico. We submitted back in 2022. We submitted in Canada, um, also late 2022. And so those processes are underway. The review processes are underway. Uh, in addition to North America, we also have um, a plans to submit in the European Union, which is a more involved and uh, complex system because you're dealing with the nuances of 27 countries all in one registration, so it takes a little bit longer. 
Um, and then in addition to Europe and North America, we also have partners that are looking at our technology, doing trials, talking to their local regulatory authorities in Turkey, in Morocco, in Israel, uh, and in South Africa. Okay. We also have some early discussions in Peru, which is, of course, a big blueberry market as well across the world. Yeah. And beyond blueberries, it's many different types of fruits that this is uh, applicable to as well, right? Yeah. So we know, I mean, so, so, so berries, whether it's raspberries or blackberries or strawberries or certainly blueberries, even cranberries, are where we've got the base established in the United States. So we know we work on those crops. So the easiest, if you will, thing to do is to take what we know works in a cropping system and apply it in other countries. And that's where this trial in Mexico is, is really exciting because this is a major player, not only in the Mexican market, but I know that they have operations in, in Peru and in Morocco. I believe they have some interest here in the US as well. They're about a 5,000 hectare grower overall, which is a big grower, focused primarily in those, in those blueberry, on, on those different berry crops. And now, in addition to berries, uh, we've got very good, compelling data on uh, indoor vegetables like tomatoes, greenhouse production, peppers as well. Uh, outdoors, we've got data on sunflowers. Uh, we are uh, in the process of trying to secure some more almond trials as well. So the opportunity for BBT is much bigger than berries alone. But what we do know is since we've got good, compelling data uh, and you know positive return on investments from berry growers in the U.S., that's the immediate opportunity when we look at a country like Mexico. And as your footprint gets larger globally, obviously there there's a bigger addressable market. Does that add any? Do you get economies of scale, or what other kind of strategic uh, value does that well, bigger footprint give you? I mean, it gives us obviously it gives us economies of scale. So sure, it does change the financials, uh, the cost of goods, improve gross margins, but, but that's not what this is really about. What this is really about is, is proving to the industry that the addressable market is beyond just the U.S. berries market, right? So that's why, you know, whether it's South Africa, whether it's Mexico, you know, previously we've announced, uh, um, you know, projects on the areas of seed treatment as well as foliar sprays. These are all projects that are geared towards increasing the addressable market, which makes us also much more attractive as a partner, right? So we're not going to be able to go to market as BBT in all these countries and all these market segments on our own. We just don't have the distribution network or the sales and marketing muscle to do that. So we need to attract business partners that are going to bring our IP to market in their local countries. So the bigger the addressable market, the more ag players are interested in partnering with us. So that's really what this is also uh, geared towards, strategy to bring more partnerships into, into the fold. And just to clarify and a bit of a refresher, there are kind of two elements to your technology. There is the bee delivery system where yeah. they fly off and deposit it as they're, they're pollinating. But then there's the biologic itself, which actually can be deployed independent of the bees you can spray it on it's obviously not as targeted and as efficient but it, it just it, it, in certain circumstances it, it can be used on it, its own correct 100 percent. so you know you talked about the 240 billion dollar uh crop protection and fertilizer market at the beginning so the vast majority of that you know 230 million billion of that are chemicals right and so one of the things that's happening is this trend to move away from chemical pesticides, crop protection products, as well as synthetic fertilizers in and, and switch over to the much more favorable, environmentally friendly biological solutions, right? So that's where the biologicals are increasing at a 14% compounded annual growth rate at the expense of chemicals. So there is a need for more biological products uh, across the board, whether they're applied using bees or whether they applied using traditional folder applications or whether they applied by coating seeds before the seeds are planted. Uh, so we can take advantage of all of those opportunities through 
developing our proprietary CR7 Colostacus rosea fungicide, biological fungicide, for those distinct markets, be vectoring, foliar, and seed applied. Well, that, that's good news. Uh, before we wrap this up, anything else you want to add to this news? So I think one thing I want to kind of, you know, make very clear is that the strategy is around, you know, finding ways to show that the playing field is much bigger. I call it the increase in addressable market. We're obviously not losing sight of what we've got today, which is the U.S. market. That's obviously the, the you know, one of the first elements of our strategy. But you know, we have a limited sales footprint. We've talked about this before. So the more we can show the bigger opportunity for BBT, the more we can benefit from partnerships, even in the sales or marketing side, which could even come back and help us in the U.S. So this is very much about, you know, finding a way to bring partners into uh, uh, the, the BBT family, if you will. Uh, and 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 that'll in turn help us even in the U.S. sales and marketing efforts. So you could potentially partner with a big crop protection companies out there, ideally do something with them so you can leverage their big distribution. That 100%, could be one hundred percent. And, and you know, I don't want to discount the possibility that a big ag company could come one day and want to buy BBT, right? So I think yeah. the more the more you can show how it can help different uh, businesses that they may have, right? So they may have. They have different country business units. They have different business units focused on seed treatment. That's a very focused market segment. So the more boxes we can check that fits within their portfolio and their strategy, the more attractive we are as a target as well. So this strategy is also consistent with that approach. Okay. Ashik, thank you very much for bringing us up today. All right, Martin. Good, good talking to you again.